Embracing God's Healing Power Healing is a profound and central theme woven intricately throughout the scriptures, serving as a testament to God's boundless compassion and unmatched power. From the opening chapters of Genesis to the closing verses of Revelation, we see God as a healer, restoring, renewing, and reviving His people. This divine characteristic is not merely an abstract concept, but is demonstrated through tangible acts of restoration, both physical and spiritual, that reveal God's deep love and concern for His creation. The theme of healing is deeply intertwined with the very nature of God, who is often referred to as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. This name reveals His heart for humanity, showing that He is not indifferent to our suffering. Instead, He is moved by our pain and steps into our brokenness with the intention to heal and make us whole again. Whether it's the healing of a disease, the mending of a broken heart, or the restoration of a soul weary from sin, God's power to heal is a beacon of hope throughout the biblical narrative. As we explore the rich tapestry of healing stories in the Bible, we are not merely reading about ancient miracles, we are encountering the living God who continues to work in our lives today. These stories of healing offer us profound encouragement and hope, reminding us that God's healing power is not confined to the past. They reassure us that, in our moments of deepest need, God is present and active, ready to intervene in our lives with His restorative power. God's involvement in our healing is deeply personal. He knows our struggles, hears our cries, and responds with the same compassion that moved Jesus to heal the sick and comfort the brokenhearted during His earthly ministry. The Bible teaches us that God is not a distant observer, but an ever-present help in times of trouble. He is intimately involved in the details of our lives, especially when we are at our weakest. In times of illness, whether of body, mind, or spirit, it can be easy to feel alone or overwhelmed by our circumstances. However, the biblical narrative on healing serves as a powerful reminder that we are never truly alone. God's healing presence is with us, offering us not only physical restoration, but also emotional and spiritual renewal. As we delve into these scriptural accounts of healing, we are invited to place our trust in God's unfailing love and His sovereign ability to bring about wholeness in every area of our lives. This exploration of healing in the Bible is not just a journey through ancient texts. It is an invitation to experience the healing power of God in our own lives today. 1. God's Promise of Healing the Bible is replete with assurances of God's unwavering commitment to heal and restore His people. This promise of healing is one of the most profound and comforting truths in Scripture, revealing the heart of God as a compassionate and loving Father who desires to see His children whole and well. Healing, as described in the Bible, is not merely a temporary relief from physical ailments. It is a comprehensive restoration that touches every part of our being body, mind, and spirit. In Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, God speaks directly to His people, saying, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. This powerful declaration is more than just words. It is a divine assurance that God sees our pain, understands our struggles, and is actively working to bring about our healing. This promise comes at a time when the Israelites were facing great hardship, yet God assures them that His plans for them include not just survival, but complete restoration. This promise is timeless, extending to us today as a reminder that God's desire is to restore us to full health, whether our wounds are physical, emotional, or spiritual. Similarly, Psalm chapter 147 verse 3 beautifully captures the depth of God's healing power. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. This verse reminds us that God's healing is not limited to our physical bodies. He is also deeply concerned with the state of our hearts. When we experience loss, grief, or deep emotional pain, God is there to bind up those wounds, bringing comfort and peace that surpasses understanding. His healing reaches the innermost parts of our being, 
addressing the hurts that others may not see or understand. God introduces himself to the Israelites as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. This name is significant because it not only identifies God as the healer, but also emphasizes his ongoing commitment to our well-being. Jehovah Rapha is not a healer who only occasionally intervenes. He is the constant source of our healing. Whether it's a physical sickness that weighs us down, emotional distress that clouds our joy, or spiritual brokenness that distances us from God, Jehovah Rapha is present to heal and restore. His healing is holistic, encompassing every aspect of our lives, ensuring that we are made whole again. This promise of healing is not just for isolated incidents. It is part of God's covenant with His people. Throughout the Bible we see God's healing work in action, from the miraculous healings in the Old Testament to the countless people restored by Jesus in the New Testament. These acts of healing are not only testimonies of God's power, but also of His unchanging character. God is as much a healer today as He was in biblical times. His promises remain true, and His desire to see us whole has not diminished. When we face sickness or suffering, it's important to remember that God's promise to heal is rooted in His love for us. He does not take our pain lightly. Rather, He is moved by our afflictions and desires to bring us relief. This understanding of God's character should fill us with hope and faith, even in the darkest of times. We can approach God with confidence, knowing that He is both willing and able to heal us, and that His healing is complete, touching every area of our lives. 2. The Healing Ministry of Jesus During His earthly ministry, Jesus Christ vividly embodied God's heart for healing, revealing the depth of God's love and compassion for humanity. Throughout the Gospels we see Jesus moving among the people, not as a distant figure, but as one deeply engaged in their suffering and pain. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk, cleansed lepers, and even raised the dead. Each of these miraculous acts was more than a display of divine power. They were profound expressions of his deep compassion and the tangible fulfillment of God's promise to restore his people. Jesus' healing ministry was a clear demonstration of the kingdom of God breaking into the world. It signified the undoing of the effects of sin, sickness, and death, pointing to the ultimate restoration that God has planned for all creation. When Jesus healed, he was not only alleviating physical suffering, but also revealing the nature of God's kingdom, a kingdom characterized by wholeness, peace, and the restoration of all things. Each healing was a sign that in God's kingdom there is no room for sickness or death. There is only life, health, and the fullness of joy. Isaiah's prophecy about the Messiah connects physical healing with spiritual redemption, offering a profound insight into the comprehensive nature of Jesus' mission. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 declares, But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. This prophecy speaks to the dual nature of Jesus' work. He came to heal both our physical bodies and our spiritual condition. The wounds of Jesus inflicted during his crucifixion are the means by which we receive healing in every aspect of our lives. His suffering was not in vain. It was purposeful, designed to bring about our redemption and restoration. This prophecy was fulfilled in Jesus, who bore the weight of our sins and provided both forgiveness and healing through his suffering. On the cross, Jesus took upon himself the consequences of our sin, both spiritual and physical. His sacrifice was complete and sufficient, offering us not only the hope of eternal life, but also the promise of healing in this life. The healing that Jesus offers is holistic, addressing the needs of our bodies, minds, and spirits. By his wounds, we are healed, restored, and made whole. The Gospels provide numerous accounts of Jesus' healing ministry, illustrating how he went about doing good, 
healing all who were oppressed by sickness and evil. One such verse, Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, encapsulates the breadth of his ministry. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. This verse highlights the relentless compassion of Jesus as he moved from town to town, reaching out to the suffering, the outcast, and the downtrodden. His healing ministry was comprehensive, addressing every disease and every affliction, showing that no illness was beyond his ability to heal and no person was beyond his reach. Jesus' healing acts were not just isolated incidents. They were central to his mission and message. They were a visible sign of the invisible grace of God at work in the world. Through these miracles, Jesus demonstrated that God's kingdom had come near, and with it, the power to heal and restore all things. His healing ministry was a foretaste of the complete restoration that will be realized when his kingdom comes in its fullness. Moreover, Jesus' healing was always accompanied by a call to faith. He often said, Your faith has made you well, indicating that while his power was the source of healing, faith was the means by which individuals received it. This underscores the importance of faith in our own pursuit of healing. Just as those who came to Jesus in faith were healed, we too are invited to come to him with our needs, trusting that he is willing and able to heal us today. In reflecting on the healing ministry of Jesus, we are reminded that the same power that was at work in him is available to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus' healing acts were not just historical events. They continue to be relevant and accessible to us today. He remains the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his desire to heal and restore has not diminished. As we bring our own wounds, whether physical, emotional, or spiritual, to him, we can trust that he will respond with the same compassion and power that he demonstrated during his earthly ministry. 3. The Role of Faith in Healing Faith is a critical and often decisive factor in the healing process, as revealed throughout the Bible. Healing is not merely a physical event, but a spiritual encounter where faith acts as a bridge between our need and God's power. The scriptures repeatedly emphasize that faith is the channel through which God's healing power flows, highlighting the integral role that belief and trust in God play in the restoration of our health and well-being. In James chapter 5, verse 14 to 15, we are given clear instructions on how to approach sickness within the community of believers. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. This passage underscores the importance of community, prayer, and faith in the healing process. It encourages us to seek out the support of our spiritual family when we are in need, recognizing that collective faith and prayer are powerful instruments in invoking God's healing. The act of calling the elders to pray and anoint with oil is deeply symbolic, representing the unity of the Church and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. However, it is the prayer offered in faith that holds the key to healing. This faith is not just a vague hope, but a confident trust in God's willingness and ability to heal. It reflects a deep belief in the promises of God, knowing that He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. The assurance that the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well serves as a powerful reminder that God honors the prayers of those who trust Him. The story of the woman with the issue of blood found in Mark chapter 5, verse 25 to 34, offers a vivid illustration of how personal faith can activate God's healing power. This woman had been suffering for twelve long years, enduring both physical pain and social isolation. Despite her dire circumstances, she held on to the belief that if she could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, she would be healed. Her faith was not passive. It was active, driving her to take a bold step towards Jesus 
despite the crowd that surrounded him. When the woman finally touched Jesus' garment, she was immediately healed. Jesus, aware that power had gone out from him, turned to find her. He did not just acknowledge the physical act of her reaching out. He commended her faith, saying, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. This encounter teaches us that while Jesus' power is limitless, it is faith that unlocks that power in our lives. The woman's healing was a direct result of her faith, her deep, unwavering belief that Jesus had the power to heal her. This story also highlights the personal nature of faith. The woman's healing was not dependent on a public declaration or a communal prayer. It was her personal faith that made the difference. This teaches us that, while community and collective prayer are important, our individual faith is crucial in experiencing God's healing. Faith is not just a belief in what God can do. It is a trust in who God is, a healer, a restorer, and a compassionate Father who desires our wholeness. Moreover, the woman's story reminds us that faith often requires action. She did not simply wait passively for healing. She pursued it. Her faith was active, prompting her to reach out to Jesus despite the obstacles. In the same way, our faith should move us to action, whether it's seeking prayer, anointing, or taking steps towards healing as led by the Spirit. Faith, however, is not a guarantee that we will always receive the specific outcome we desire, but it is the posture that opens us up to God's will and His perfect timing. Faith trusts that God knows what is best for us and that His plans are for our good, even when they don't align with our expectations. It is a faith that rests in the character of God, confident in His love and power. In the journey of healing, whether we are praying for ourselves or others, it is faith that sustains us. Faith reassures us that God is with us, that He hears our prayers, and that He is capable of doing immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. It is this faith that we are called to cultivate and exercise, knowing that as we do, we position ourselves to receive the fullness of God's healing touch in our lives. 4. The Healing Power of Prayer Prayer is one of the most powerful tools God has given us, especially when it comes to seeking healing. Throughout Scripture, prayer is consistently presented as a vital means of connecting with God, laying our burdens before Him, and inviting His intervention in our lives. When we pray for healing, we are engaging in a profound act of faith, acknowledging both our need and God's ability to meet that need. Prayer is not just a ritual, it is a lifeline, a direct line of communication with the Creator who holds the power to heal and restore. Psalm chapter 103 verse 2 to 3 beautifully captures the essence of prayer and its role in healing. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. This passage calls us to remember and celebrate God's many blessings, particularly His forgiveness and healing. It reminds us that God's ability to heal is as real and as significant as His power to forgive. Just as we trust Him for the forgiveness of our sins, we can trust Him for the healing of our bodies and minds. This call to bless the Lord is an invitation to approach God with a heart full of gratitude, recognizing all that He has done and continues to do in our lives. Gratitude in prayer is essential because it shifts our focus from our problems to God's power. It reminds us of His faithfulness in the past, which strengthens our faith for the present. When we thank God for His benefits, His forgiveness, His mercy, His healing, we are reinforcing our trust in Him. This trust is crucial as we seek healing because it anchors us in the belief that God is both willing and able to heal us. However, as we pray for healing, it's important to remember that God's timing and methods may differ from our own expectations. This truth is beautifully illustrated in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 6, where God promises, I will bring health and healing, and I will heal them and reveal to them 
abundance of prosperity and security. This verse is a powerful reminder that God's plan for our healing is part of a broader picture of prosperity and security that He desires to bring into our lives. God's healing is holistic. It encompasses not just physical well-being, but also emotional, spiritual, and even financial prosperity. Yet the fulfillment of this promise often requires patience and trust. God's timing is perfect, but it doesn't always align with our own desires or schedules. Sometimes healing is immediate. At other times, it is a process that unfolds over time. There are moments when God's healing comes in ways we did not anticipate, or when He chooses to work through doctors, medicine, or other means. In every case, we are called to trust that His ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts higher than our thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 to 9. Our role is to remain steadfast in prayer, believing that God is at work even when we cannot see it. Prayer for healing also requires us to submit our desires to God's will. Jesus himself modeled this in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Luke chapter 22 verse 42 This prayer of submission is crucial in our healing journey. It acknowledges that while we earnestly desire healing, we ultimately trust God's plan for our lives. We recognize that He sees the bigger picture and knows what is best for us, even when His answers to our prayers differ from our expectations. Moreover, the healing power of prayer extends beyond the physical. Prayer brings peace, comfort, and strength, even when healing does not come in the way we had hoped. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7 encourages us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This passage reminds us that prayer not only brings healing, but also a profound sense of peace, guarding our hearts and minds from anxiety and fear as we trust in God's perfect will. The healing power of prayer is a profound and essential part of our relationship with God. It is through prayer that we lay our burdens at His feet, invite His healing touch, and align our will with His. As we pray for healing, we do so with gratitude, faith, and trust, confident that God hears our prayers and is working all things for our good. Whether His healing comes immediately, gradually, or in ways we do not expect, we rest in the assurance that God's plans for us are good and His timing is perfect. Through prayer, we tap into the limitless power of God who forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. 5. Healing for the Soul While physical healing is indeed a miraculous gift, the Bible places even greater emphasis on the healing of the soul. This form of healing addresses the deepest need of humanity, the need for reconciliation with God and the cleansing of our souls from the stain of sin. Physical healing, as wonderful as it is, affects only the body and is temporary in nature. Spiritual healing, on the other hand, touches the very core of our being and has eternal significance. The separation caused by sin is the most profound wound any human can experience. Sin not only disrupts our relationship with God, but also brings about spiritual death, alienation, and a brokenness that no earthly remedy can cure. The Bible teaches that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3 verse 23, and that the wages of sin is death, Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This spiritual reality underscores the critical importance of healing for the soul a healing that only God can provide through Jesus Christ. Through Christ's sacrificial death on the cross, we are offered the ultimate healing. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 powerfully encapsulates this truth. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, 
that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. This verse reveals the depth of Christ's love and the completeness of the healing he offers. When Jesus bore our sins on the cross, he took upon himself the penalty we deserved, offering his own life as a ransom for ours. His wounds, those inflicted during his suffering and crucifixion, became the means by which we are healed. The healing referred to in this verse is not merely physical, it is spiritual and comprehensive. It speaks to the healing of our souls from the effects of sin and the restoration of our relationship with God. This is the essence of spiritual healing, being made whole and righteous before God, not because of our own efforts, but because of what Christ has done for us. Through his wounds, we are healed in the most profound sense, being brought from death to life, from sin to righteousness. Spiritual healing is the foundation upon which all other forms of healing rest. Without it, even physical healing would be incomplete, as it would not address the root cause of human suffering, sin. Christ's work on the cross provides a holistic healing that encompasses every aspect of our lives. It is a healing that begins with the soul and extends to the body, mind, and spirit. Moreover, this healing is available to all who come to Christ in faith. The Bible assures us that, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 This cleansing, this spiritual healing, is a gift of grace, offered freely to all who believe. It is not something we can earn or deserve. It is a work of God's mercy and love, accomplished through the sacrifice of His Son. This healing for the soul brings about a transformation in our lives. As 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24 continues, We are healed, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Spiritual healing is not just about being forgiven, it is about being changed. It involves dying to our old way of life, our sinful patterns, thoughts, and behaviors, and being raised to a new life of righteousness in Christ. This new life is characterized by a deep and abiding relationship with God, a life lived in the power of the Holy Spirit, and a life that reflects the character of Christ. The healing of the soul also brings peace, peace with God, and the peace of God. Romans chapter 5 verse 1 declares, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This peace is the result of being reconciled to God, knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we are in right standing with Him. It is a peace that transcends our circumstances a peace that remains even in the midst of life's trials and challenges. Furthermore, spiritual healing is the beginning of a lifelong journey of sanctification, being made more and more like Christ. As we grow in our relationship with God, He continues to heal the wounds of our past, renew our minds, and transform our hearts. This ongoing process of healing and transformation is a testimony to the power of Christ's sacrifice and the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. While physical healing is a blessing, the healing of the soul is of far greater importance and eternal significance. Through Christ's sacrifice we are offered complete and total healing, healing that touches every part of our being and restores us to a right relationship with God. This is the ultimate healing, one that not only frees us from the power of sin, but also brings us into the fullness of life that God intended for us. As we experience this healing, we are called to live out our new identity in Christ, dying to sin and living to righteousness, to the glory of God. In conclusion, in times of sickness, pain, or emotional distress, we can find solace in the healing promises of Scripture. Let us bring our needs before God, remembering that He is our healer. Whether we need physical healing, emotional restoration, or spiritual renewal, God is ready and willing to heal. May we also extend our faith to others, praying for their healing and restoration. Prayer for Healing Heavenly Father, we come before you today, acknowledging your power to heal. 
We ask for your healing touch in our lives and the lives of those we love. Help us to trust in your promises and to seek you with all our hearts. May we find peace in your presence and strength in our faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Key verses for reflection. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for you are my praise. Psalm chapter 41 verse 3. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness you restore him to full health. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. By his wounds we are healed. James chapter 5 verse 14 to 15. Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them. Let these verses guide your meditation and prayer as you seek healing in every aspect of your life. Amen.